it's the end of the winter diaries series winter is behind us spring is here so it's time to evaluate how winter's gone look at how all the plants have survived the winter and think ahead for spring so join me as we have a look around the garden here's a great sign of spring this is the gunnera cryptica unfurling its first leaves of the year and you can see the flower cone down there as well and as we look around we've got the daffodils that are in full bloom still and more gunnera waiting to unleash its full potential opening up those huge leaves now we still could get frost and we will get frost as we go to the end of March into April and even into early May and that is why we don't plant out our very tender plants till well into May in my location it might be different in yours slightly up in Scotland it can be well into June before you can do the very tender plants planted out for summer bedding in further south it could be end of March into April where you get frost free times but here it's definitely not out of the woods yet in terms of frost and the gunners, the first leaves here, you've got two options. You can cover them with lots of fleece and blankets and things like that. If you don't want these leaves to be damaged by the cold that will come over the next few weeks at night time. Or you can do what I pretty much do every year. And just basically the first few leaves are sacrificial. And they will get crisped and blackened by some late frosts. But it doesn't really matter. It doesn't set the plant back at all because there's lots of new leaves ready to emerge from the center from the crowns of these plants that will quickly replace any damaged leaves and if we look over here look at the size of that rhizome that crown there it's absolutely enormous that one's growing this direction and we've got several other and if I wish now I could actually divide these plants and have several of them but obviously because of the new sort of uh, laws that have come into place, I shan't be doing that because we've got to keep these and not propagate these because they're being classed as invasive species in the UK and Europe. But that's another story which I've covered in different videos. So let's look for other signs of spring. Here's another sign of spring. We've got these strange pinkish protrusions coming out of the ground here some look a bit mushy but overall we've got some decent life in these things and i'll tell you what these are these are collocasias these are collocasia pink china and they're all over this area they're actually in my arid bed but this corner i didn't take up all the pink chinas so they're still in this location and they, they got through last summer well and they've got through the winter well and now they're starting to grow and it's not long until the first leaves emerge from these stems so obviously frost will damage them so i might cover these up if we get a frost forecast but other than that they'll quickly come out when the earth warms up the days get longer now and these will be in full leaf i would say within a month's time now here's a plant that's not looking especially happy and it's not looked happy really for a year this is my cycas revoluta it lost all its leaves in drought actually they got damaged and then i cut them all off and we are waiting for them to re-sprout which won't happen until mid to late summer really in my location sometimes they miss a year like they did last year so i'm hoping it will unfurl new leaves this year and if we look at the center here you have to be careful it's pretty spiky but it's not got any ooze or anything like that that is still firm and i believe alive and it's got through the winter unharmed so we'll see how that grows later in the year my briar amata palm one of my favorite palm trees it looks really nice in the sunlight and it's got through winter no problems whatsoever all the leaves are still looking really really good the center holds firm so we've got no spear pull at this stage but although you know you can get spear pull well into spring into summer but this is looking like a good healthy palm tree that's got through the winter without any issues whatsoever and i've still got my shelters on the arid bed here so we just pan round 
quite roughly there and look through underneath we can see we've got my yuccas yucca montanas are looking really good overall the lowest leaves have some winter damage but it's nowhere near the center so that's looking good my agave americana it's pushing already trying to grow against the top but we have got spotting over the leaves and the lower leaves will probably die off pretty quickly but that looks like it's got through the winter pretty much okay. There's no black in the center there, so that's fine. Desdelarion, that's looking good. My yuccas in the ground are also looking good, so they have got through the winter, no issues. Not everything has. We've mentioned on other videos how some of the plants haven't fared so well. So we've got down here with the early weeds growing we've got a little agave that's not really happy there we've got a cacti here that is totally fine another agave needs weeding over there and this agave bractosa completely unfazed by winter so great little agave to try in cool locations over there we've got a Agave, it's not looking 100% healthy. That's lemon and lime, which is a type of Americana, but I think that's going to pull through and be fine. So, a bit of a mixed bag with the arid plants. Overall, the big established plants I've got through totally fine, but the smaller agaves, more tender plants that I've just planted last summer, haven't fared as well. But overall, this part of the garden is still looking good. And got for a winter pretty much unscathed you can tell the temperatures are warming up now because we've got persicaria red dragon looking fabulous already producing nice head of leaves here yes they hate any cold when in growth like this so some late frost will blacken the foliage but it'll quickly re-sprout from the base and this plant grows so quickly propagates immensely from any small cutting piece of root anything basically in fact you can see little stems that have fallen over have produced new plants over there so it, it's a very easy plant to propagate once you've got it in your garden you'll always be able to keep it you can divide it and you can keep it contained pretty well as well it doesn't spread very easily in terms of sending out lots of runners very easy to keep in check but it's a great sign that springs are really here winters behind us and we can look forward to the growing season ahead now let's look at the tree ferns because it's getting to that time of year where we can start looking under the protection if we put that in the crown and see if the knuckles are looking good so i use straw as protection you see the older leaves have got quite a lot of winter damage but in the center if we remove the straw we should see new leaves unfurling or the knuckles at least green in there so make a bit of a noise and there we go let's get in there i'll show you that see that that is the first leaf unfurling already i put my hand in there everything feels nice and firm so there are lots of growth ready to explode out of the center we want to hold that back a little bit because Again, like the persicaria, any frost will quickly damage those emerging leaves. So we don't want it to grow too quickly, but it's not too much we can do. If it warms up, they will unfurl. But I'm just going to put the straw gently over the top like that, just to protect it from any further frost we may, may have. But once the leaves start unfurling, there's little you can do to protect it from those late frosts. But there'll always be plenty of leaves that come through in spring there so that's one of the tree ferns we've got others as well and i'll go around checking on those and i'm sure we'll find the same unfurling leaves nice green knuckles if you look in yours and you've got black knuckles you may have to remove those if they're completely dead for the leaves underneath to come through and if you've got orange goo all over the center and you can't feel any knuckles then the tree fern may have died but highly highly unlikely that will happen this winter because overall apart from a few very cold nights it's been a very mild winter 
Now it's still too early to see growth on cannas, gingers and dahlias. They're still dormant underground where all the storage is in the rhizomes. We've still got some dead foliage on these here, these cannas protecting the ground. But under there, the plants are well and truly alive. And as the soil warms up over the next month or two, these will start emerging probably with the cannas first, then the dahlias and then the slow gingers will come behind that. But as soon as they start growing, they will shoot for the sky, grow large very, very quickly. So don't be worried if you don't see these plants yet. It's still too early in spring to see these in active growth. So the plants outside have fared pretty well over winter, but one thing that didn't fare well was the structure that should be here, and that was my archway. In summer, it's covered with the chocolate vines, the passion flowers, and it always looks nice because it's got the evergreen foliage there. We've got the spring blossom from the chocolate vines, that beautiful chocolate vanilla scent. We've got the unusual purple bluish fruit in autumn, and we've got the passion flowers in summer as well. So, very nice feature in the garden we've had here for a good five, six, seven years but the winter storms meant that it fell over. It was completely rotten at the base and it had to be removed. So last weekend, I set about actually removing the structure and it was a bit harder than I thought because there was so many vines, I had to cut through every single one, so many stems on both sides of it, and it was pretty heavy as well. So I took, did my best of breaking up the structure and taking it away, well, to the back or the front of the garden, which has left this open space. If I move out of the way now, what you're left with is a new view. And that view is of my Jubea chilensis palm tree. I asked on social media if you preferred it without the archway or with the archway. And I think overall, people think the view now is far more impressive looking forward as you walk over the bridge and you see this a magnificent palm tree. And it really is. I love this Shabaya Chilensis. It's the biggest palm tree, the oldest palm tree I have in the garden. The first big plants are planted right in the center of the garden. It's got through all the winters and it's growing away steadily now. It's getting wider at the base. The leaves are getting longer and it's about from one side to the other it's pretty much four meters across so it's a substantial plant so if you are growing this are growing this palm tree in your garden give it space give it lots of space don't put it anywhere near a wall or a fence or surrounded by other plants give it several meters in all directions around it with permanent plants you've still got space to underplant it and you can have temporary plants close by while it's small but over time it will be a dominant feature in your garden. But back to the archway, because I've removed it, it means the chocolate vines and the passion flowers have nowhere really to go. One thing I've been able to do with the chocolate vine is keep one stem and I'm trailing it along the posts here and the balustrade for the walkway over the pond. But the other plants really they're not got anywhere to go, but we've got some abutions down there that'll cover this space. We've got the palm tree here that is now, will be able to expand itself because it's not got that archway in the way. And this is a, it's a type of European fan palm, Chemerops humilis arborescence. So the straight trunk forming type of European fan palm. And we've got the princeps palm on the other side. So two beautiful palm trees that will come up and cover this area. The chocolate vines have self-seeded, so we'll be able to grow them in other areas. And the passion flower, the vine of that will trail along the balustrade on the other side of the walkway as well. So all is not lost. Yes, I would have probably liked to keep the archway for another couple of years, but it means now we've got a new view into the garden, new planting opportunities for this part of the space. It really is a beautiful, beautiful spring day. Pretty warm, pretty sheltered in my garden at this point. The plants are looking good. The evergreen plants look as good now as they do in summer. 
very happy with how the palm trees, the bamboos have got through winter and we've looked at quite a lot already. We've seen that at ground level the rhizomes of things like the cannas and gingers are fine, the collocasias are starting to grow, the plants like persicaria and also the tree ferns are emerging as well. The arid plants overall we have had some little losses but overall the established plants are looking totally fine but what about the bananas and how are the plants in the greenhouse fared over winter let's go and have a look in there now so it was only last week or the week before we had a full tour of the greenhouse so i won't be looking at every plant in this video but in just that few short days we've already seen lots of growth on plants got more flowers on the begonias we've got things bulking up the aeoniums are looking better they've had the first good water of the season and seeds have started to emerge so if we look down to my right we have some seeds already sprouting only took less than a week to germinate and there the spanish flag Ipomea, Lobata, and they're on a heat mat. So there's a heat pad there, like a reptile heat pad. And we've got some seeds germinating in less than a week there with no preparation, just fantastic germination over there. In the center, we have got some seeds that have germinated without any heat whatsoever or additional heat. And they're just some African marigolds for some summer bedding. And then let's look into the propagator because in the propagator we've got all sorts of things i showed you a couple but we've got more seeds developing we've got the cannas so they're doing good they're into the first and second leaf stage already we've got some tomatoes that need pricking out into their own pots we've got the electric daisies as you can see tiny little seedlings there and we've also got some other seedlings emerging but one thing that hasn't sprouted yet are my spider flowers a cleome i've had this happen before where in some years for whatever reason they just don't want to germinate so i might try taking some of them off the heat and seeing if they can just germinate in the greenhouse without additional heat so we'll just quickly walk it down to the end where the sand heat bench is it's actually pretty warm in here it must be well over 20 degrees today and you can see things need a water in here we can see all the irisane and things persian shield sprouting new leaves we've got the very tropical banana edible banana hanging on to one decent leaf there so that's getting through winter okay as this video is all about finishing winter into spring that's got through and then we'll look under here and here we have the Tifonias, so the Mexican sunflowers, they've already sprouted. They took literally three or four days to sprout. Actually, it doesn't need that lid, so I'll just take that lid off now they've germinated. And behind we have some tobacco seeds, which haven't germinated yet. But like I said, it's only been a few days, so we'll wait for them to germinate. But spring is definitely here. We've got things into growth. We've got flowers. This is a nice peachy, orangey peach version of the cigar plant, Cafea, and it's covered in green flies. So I'll give that a little spray. Like I said, we've got the begonias in flower. We've got here a few shoydies, a red version over there, if we can focus as well. And everything's looking pretty happy. So that's these plants here. And we've also got the Musa Baju, which are dug up, and the Musa Sikimensis, they're alive and growing. We've got the mountain papaya up there, begonia luxurians. So everything's doing well. Spring is well and truly here. And we can look forward to watching these plants grow on. We can divide plants. We can watch them unfurl their new leaves like this Schefflera is doing here and that is the end definitely of the winter series so thank you for watching this series of getting plants through winter I think the success rate has been pretty good we've only really lost a few small trial agaves outside everything else has pretty much got through with no issues so thank you for watching this series thank you for watching this episode 
and we'll move forward now into spring and we'll get the garden full of color and foliage and we get ready for summer.